Good morning and welcome to Apex Church Online. We're so delighted you've joined with us this morning. What a great chance it is to come together now as we lift our praise and worship to God and be thankful for all he's done for us. So let's just join together just now with the worship team.
Well, wasn't that just a lovely time of praise and worship this morning? We truly hope and pray that you felt God's presence with you. Let's just come together now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can join together in this online community. Lord, and come in prayer and we come with our worship to you this morning. Lord, we're so thankful for what you've for what you've done in each one of our lives. Lord, we recognise the needs in our own town and across the world. Lord, of all the tragedies that we've seen and heard on the news this week. Lord, we believe your hand is in it all, Lord, to bring these atrocities to an end. Lord, we're so thankful that you are the God who is in control. And Lord, we place our hope and our trust in you this morning, Lord, as we bring our prayers and requests to you. Lord, and I just pray for those at home watching online, Lord, that you'll touch them where they are right now. Let them feel your peace and your presence with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, it's my privilege to introduce Stephen as he's going to come and bring a word to you. Well, good morning, friends, and welcome again uh, to uh, Apex Online. It's fantastic to have you with us uh, it's, as part of our online experience, and we thank you again for joining with us today. And you know, as I've said so many times when I've shared with you before, I am still in that place of praying and believing that you would really sense that God is with you in the here and now, that you would sense God's Spirit with you. Whatever, if you're in your own home, if you're in a friend's home, if you're in a member of your family's home, or even if you're in a place of work, that even now you would sense God speaking through these next few moments. You know, for those who joined just a few weeks ago, you maybe have heard me sharing about an experience that I had when uh, I visited Cove Harbour. Uh, and on the way down, there was a wee bench there, and on the corner of the bench, we found a wee stone, and it had a, an amazing text uh, in there. But you know, there's a part two to that story, but with all good part twos, you're going to have to wait for the ending. But I will share that with you in a few moments. We're here to continue our series called Beyond. And what I wanted to think about today was the beyond, the here and now. You know, over the past few weeks and past few months, one of the things that I'm sure you've enjoyed as much as I have is hearing people just sharing what they've been doing at the weekend, being able to go places, enjoy one another's company, meet up with family and friends who they haven't seen in such a long time. We've been through so much in the past two years, and I want to be sensitive just now, and hey, yes, we've maybe been through the same period of time, but for some people, it's been a tougher few years than others. And friends, we're praying for you if you're still dealing with the consequences over the past two years, and we just pray that God would do a work in your life, and you would be able to move forward. But you know, in the here and now, we really want to think today about the beyond, the here and now. You know, I just want to think of the first point to, uh, that I want to share with you is uh, to move beyond our here and now. We need Sometimes we need to learn from our past and we need to thank God for what he has done. You know, one of the things that I am so incredibly thankful for is times when I have been able to stand up in front of church and, and look at the congregation and just be so incredibly thankful for the people who have been in that congregation, who have faithfully shared God's word, who have sowed seeds of faith into my life. And you know, because of that, that has helped me to grow, that has helped me to mature in my faith, and it's helped me to be able to, to share with others. I'm sure you will have had that experience, and there will be people in your life who you can think, hey, there's been real giants of the faith that have really spoken to me and have encouraged me in my journey. Let's thank God for those people who have, for what they have done and for their faithfulness in sharing with us. But you know, in that moment of looking back, we don't look back at it, it was sadness. You know, we can look back at things and we can learn from them. 
We can look back and we can look at scenarios or situations and we can, we can grow. Right? We can take, think about the decisions where we may, maybe made mistakes and we can think, well, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm sure we can all identify with that. But you know, friends, if you have got Jesus in your life, God's word tells us if we have sinned in the past, which all of us have, let's get that straight this morning. Each one of us has sinned. But you know, there's something incredibly special about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because when we look back, yes, we can maybe look back at the mistakes in our life, but we can look back with certainty of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And because of what he did for us on the cross, we are set free. Our sins are forgiven. Our sin is no longer there. Yes, sometimes there may be consequences that we need to work through, but God forgives us our sins. Friends, so many times it's, it can be good for us to look back, not to wallow in history, not to wallow in our past, but to learn from the past so that it can prepare us to move forward from the here and now and to move beyond that point to the purposes that God has for each of our lives. You know, I just want to think about our second point this morning, and that being sometimes, and hey, it's not just sometimes, we need to acknowledge and recognize that God is with us in the here and now. Friends, I'm sure that you've all had experiences where you can look back or <laughs> we know of where we can, we can just say, and we can look at a situation and we just say, well, I couldn't have got through that in my own. I just know that God was there. I just know that God took me through. And we can look at that scenario and we can give thanks for that. But you know, God is still with us. God is with us in the here and now. Friends, how special is it for us to think in your place where you're watching this in the here and now, God is with you. And I sometimes think, again, there are times in my life that I think, if I was to put my arms around that and just think more that God is with us, how much more would it change the decisions that I make in my life? How much more would it change the decisions of your life? Friends, I don't know what's going on in your life just now, but I can say with confidence, God is with you. He's with you in the here and now. I was reminded just the other day of when I went into a home, and you used to see it quite a lot, uh, it's, and you've maybe got it in your own home, but a little plaque or a little uh, poster that used to be up uh, in people's living rooms. Some people have got it uh, as, a, as a, some, a framed uh, piece that sits uh, on their mantelpiece. And you know, it tells the story or the poem of Footprints. Now, it's maybe something that you're familiar with, I don't know, and I'm not going to go through it word for word just now, but I just want to share the essence of what that is telling us. It's a story of, of a guy who, who looks back on his life, and when he looks back on his life, they're either walking along a beach, and there's two sets of footprints, and the other set of footprints is Jesus walking with him. And there's, he's looking back in his life and there's this part that he looks at and there's only one set of footprints. And the, the story tells us that he looks at Jesus and says, well, where were you? <laughs> I'm sure we've all had that moment where we think you feel so alone. We just feel that we're completely lost. But here we have this man looking back, or the story tells us, looks back and he says to Jesus, where were you? There was only one set of footprints. And I just love the response that's given in that story. And it's just the words where Jesus tells a man, it was then that I carried you. Friends, it's such an incredible truth. So often it may be today that you are feeling alone. It may be today that you're feeling in that place of, <laughs> I'm a Christian, I love God, but I just kind of get out of where I'm at. God is with you. And you know, sometimes we need to just grasp hold of that. Sometimes we need just that little bit more faith to remember 
and to hold on, on to God because he's with us in the here and now. What better way to prepare to move beyond the here and now than to go with certainty that God is leading us. Now, I heard the story just a couple of days ago of a, it was a, a wee <laughs> story that somebody shared of a, a person in the water a, who, who needed help. And he had one hand that he was holding on to the life belt with and his other hand, was, he was holding on to his luggage. And the people were telling him, hold on to the life belt. But he said, no, but I'll lose my luggage. <laughs> and you know, the crux of the matter was it, it, he had to make a decision. He had to let go of the luggage and he held on to the life belt with two hands. And when he did that, he was saved. He held on to it tight and the guys in the boat pulled him in. And because of that, he was saved. How many times, how much of us need to sometimes just let go of the luggage and turn to our Heavenly Father, turn to our Lord and Savior, and instead of having a hand holding on to something else, turn to him and take both his hands and ask him to lead us forward. It's incredible to think in the here and now, God is with us. Now there's a passage I just want to share with you just now, and it's, it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and it's verses 9 to 12, and I'm just going to read them to you just now. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. What a promise. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except his, their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. When we think of those words, friends, I don't know what that speaks to you, but you know, as Christians, the Holy Spirit comes and resides. The person of the Holy Spirit comes and resides within us. He's with us every step of the way. He strengthens us. He gives us what we need. You know, when we seek him, he will speak to us. When we think of that passage, it's a spirit that God freely gives to us when we ask Jesus into our lives. There's nothing spooky about it. It's a gift from God, something that we receive. How much more, how, what would it do for us each day in the morning when we get up out of bed and we take time just to remember that word, that just that word, God freely gave his spirit. That spirit dwells within me, dwells within you, dwells within us as if we're Christians. And we just, if we were to grasp hold of that, we just think of the fruits of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience. How much more could that be allowed to grow if we just grab hold of that moment and move beyond where we're at and ask his spirit to lead us forward? such an incredible truth and I think there's so much in that passage we could spend a whole day speaking about that passage and I'm sure you've got many experiences where you can maybe look at and say well hey I know I've sensed the spirit in that moment that spirit has led me safely on and let's thank God for those moments let's look back at them let's learn from them let's move forward knowing that his spirit is with us he teaches us he leads us. He gives gifts. He gives spiritual gifts. And God's word tells us that we have to eagerly desire those gifts because he wants to build us. He wants to build our faith. Friends, just think of that passage and that spirit that he has freely given each one of us. You know, often I've heard people saying to me, how do I know if I am where God wants me to be? You know, I just love this wee 
passage, as, as we uh, quote, it comes from a book written by Andy Stanley uh, called Visioneering. And it reads this, if you are seeking first, that's a clue, <laughs> if you're seeking first his kingdom where you are, then where you are is where he has positioned you. Friends, it's coming back to that moment in the morning. Dear Lord, just lead me today. If we seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added. Friends, he will lead you on. To know if you are in God's plans and to know if you are in God's purposes, if we are seeking his spirit, if we're seeking him and allowing him to move in and through our lives, he will place us where he wants us to be. Be certain and be sure of that this morning. You know, it comes to my third point uh, just now, and to move beyond the, the here and now, sometimes we need to have the faith to trust God for the future and step in to those purposes. I've touched on that just now. We can just seek in His Spirit and just allow in His Spirit to move, move forward. But you know, sometimes we need to have the faith to take that step. You know, so often we're in a culture, and let's be honest, it's all fast food. We just, we don't want the preparation time. We just want the promise. We just want that end result. We often laugh as a family when we go to a, a fast food restaurant and we'll wait for 20 minutes for the drive through <laughs> And then we come to the window and then the gentleman or the lady who's serving you asks you to go for a parking space because your meal isn't ready. And you think, really? I've waited 20 minutes and it's not ready. But you know, I was thinking about that and, and, and thinking if I was served food that was old, it had been cooked two hours before, I would be complaining about it. Sometimes to get that fresh food, to get that, that moment, to get that freshness from the food that's been prepared, we've got to allow that preparation time to happen. And you know, so it is with us. We need to have the faith to step out. We need to have the faith to allow God to build us. We need to move in that steps of faith. And how do we move in those steps? Take one step at a time. We were out walking uh, with my son and my nephew just a couple of weeks ago, and we were going up a hill, and my nephew said, Stephen, I can't do that. <laughs> And we just happened to look back and say, look, that's the hill that you've come down. And he said, wow, I didn't realize it was so steep. He said, but how are we going to get up this hill to the other side? And you know, we just remember that moment, one step at a time. And I'll never uh, forget my nephew's look. When we got to the top of that hill, he just turned and looked. He says, aye, Steve, one step at a time. When we take those steps, it's important. We need to take the steps. What are your next steps today? What are your next steps to move on in faith with the Heavenly Father? You know, I just love the passage of Peter when he takes that step of faith outside of the boat and walks to, the heavenly, to, to Jesus on the water. I try to sometimes put myself into that narrative. Would I be the person or one of the people sitting in the boat cheering on Peter? Or would I be the one who's taken that step of faith? I would ask, where is it that uh, there's the most faith taking place? Is it the person saying, it's okay, Peter, you're going to be fine? <laughs> or is it Peter who actually takes those steps? Ultimately, Peter took the steps of faith. And you know, we can all find ourselves in a place where we've taken the step of faith to follow our Lord and Savior, and something has happened, and we've taken our eyes off of him, and we find ourselves starting to sink. But you know, I just love that passage when you just read that the Lord didn't look at them and judge Peter because he took his eyes off him because the winds and the waves were starting to rise round about him. Instead, he held out his hand and he took him safely back on board. What are your next steps today? Friends, we're going to be having a baptismal service in church in a few weeks. And I, I just wonder if the next step for you is to step out in faith and be baptized. That public declaration and showing others, this is who I am in Christ. When I go down into the water, dead to self, 
being raised out of the water, can raise into new life with him, taking steps of faith and steps of obedience to follow him. Incredible moments in incredible times. But you know, there's another quote from uh, Andy Stanley's book that I want to share with you, and it reads this. If you decide that what God is asking you uh, or what God is asking you to do with your life is just too much on you and it's just a little too un inconvenient, then you will never see the miracles that he has for you. You know, there's such a challenge in that, right? But you, at the same time, there's so much truth. God has got miracles for us. But if we don't take those steps of faith, we maybe won't see them. Friends, we need to take that steps of faith for our Heavenly Father. I love the passage from 2 Corinthians 3.17 that reads, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Friends, I just pray that you would sense that Spirit of the Lord with you just now that gives you that freedom so that you can take that steps of faith. The Spirit will give you the courage. Just step out for him. I said at the start and spoke about uh, the, the story of the bench. <laughs> okay, here's that part two moment. I went back a few days later uh, to that same bench and It'll come up in the screen. There was a, a wee stone on there that we found on the day. And it's on the stone. Somebody had taken the time to, re to write on it, I am Jehovah, and besides me there is no saviour. And that came from the book of Isaiah. And you know, for that moment, it was an incredible moment for that spoke to me in that moment. And I was able to share that with our friends in church and with yourselves. It was just such a special moment to know that God is with us and there's no saviour other than Jesus. I went back to that same bench and as I walked up to it, I, I didn't quite know what to expect. I, can, if it was a person who had drawn it, I wanted to say thank you to them. But when I went back, there was no stone. Instead, what I saw was an empty bench. You know, a part of me was sitting thinking, wow, do I be dis disappointed? But you know, I sat on that bench and just took a few moments to think. And you know, in those few moments, I was thinking, the passage in that stone is no longer in the stone. It's in here. Because as I have read that passage and as I have sunk that and remembered that truth, remembered <laughs> that promise and remembered that there is no other savior like Jesus, that truth is so much alive. And you know, it's so true that we can go back to the same place and expect different results. But you know, the truth is, sometimes we don't need to go back to the same place looking for the same results again. We need to move forward. We need to learn from our past. We need to take what God has installed in our lives and not forget about it and think it's a new day. God's got to do a new thing. Yes, he will. And I'm going to come to that in a few moments. We need to take all of these things. They're gifts from God. Let's accept them. Let's never forgive, forget them. Let's be thankful for them and let them build our faith as we step in Him. You know, I remember sitting in that bench that day and I had my phone with me and the signal isn't good in that area. But I found a couple of notes that I had uh, written for a, a message that I shared previously. And I just took time to reflect. Can we, we, there was this, can I am Jehovah. It's who our Lord said he was. And I was just reminded, Jehovah, if we look at the Old Testament, the characteristics of God, and we'll look at some of the character of God, that reads this. We read in Genesis, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. We read in Exodus, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. We read in Exodus again, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner. We read further on, Elohim, he is the living God. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Jehovah Ra, the Lord, our shepherd. Jehovah Sidkindu, the Lord, our righteousness. But the last one, even in that moment, sitting on that bench, Jehovah Shammah, 
the Lord is here. He's here in the here and now. Friends, he's with you in the here and now. That is who our God is. You know, one of the things that I've learned over the past few years is when you're reading scripture, when you're reading the Bible, God's word, something can we, we can be guilty of looking at one verse and then forgetting to read on. Okay? Sometimes that verse can be so profound and that's right to do that. But you know, I happen to look further in Isaiah 43, that same passage where we read eh, that message from that was written on the stone, I am Jehovah, and besides me there is no saviour. In that same passage it reads this, Forget the former things, do not dwell in the past, see I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Friends, when we think about moving beyond the here and now, I just hope and pray that what you have heard will have encouraged you. There will have been something that God has spoken to you that's prepared you for moving beyond the here and now. But I just want to give the invitation just now, if, if there's anybody watching this who has, hasn't accepted the Lord as their Savior, you know, it's a simple prayer. The Lord is here. He's with you in the here and now. And you know, when we open our hearts and ask him to come into our lives, that is what he does. You know, sometimes I would love to say that all our problems will just vanish, right? But that's not the case. Sometimes we need to work things through, but God is with us. And God takes us on an incredible journey. Because as I said earlier, you will have God's spirit within. You'll have Jesus in your life. So I just want to give the opportunity, if you want to ask Jesus into your life just now, just pray these simple words with me. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would forgive me for my, for my sins. Lord, I come to you and I say sorry for all the wrong things that I have done. Lord, I come to you and I thank you for these few moments where I've been able to hear you speak to me. But I come and I ask you into my life, Lord Jesus. Friends, if you've prayed that prayer today, you can be certain sure that you are moving beyond the here and now with our Lord and Saviour in your life. For those who already have Jesus in their lives, what's your next step going to be? What's that next step of faith going to be? Let's move into his plans and his purposes. Amen. We praise you.
wasn't that just an amazing word from Stephen this morning? Truly felt God's presence as he's opened scripture with this. It was just so good to be here and to hear that word. Well, coming up in the life of Apex, we've got so much things going on um, in the month of May and June. Can you believe we're coming to that time? Halfway through the year almost. Tomorrow night, the 30th of May, 6 o'clock, we're continuing our Beyond Prayer Meeting. And it's at the Apex Centre, 6pm, and we'd love to see you there. Please pop that in your diary. Also, next weekend, the 5th of June, Jubilee weekend, we have a baptismal service. How exciting is it to see people declaring that Jesus is number one in their lives and they come and be baptized. So again, we'd love to invite you to come along to that service. And on the 12th of June, we've got Pastor Ian and Elizabeth Duthie from King's Church in Aberdeen for a team night. And we would love to see you there. And when we see team, each one of us who come to church are part of the team, part of the community, part of the body of Christ. And we would love to see you come along and just hear the wisdom that we're going to be, he be hearing. It's just going to be gold. So I really encourage you to sign up when you get the email for that. And then the best time of the year, the church picnic, the 18th of June at St. Combs, 12 p.m. Tickets are £5 each and those primary seven and under are free. Please, please intend to be there. Drop the church an email to reserve your tickets and we can get them delivered to you or picked up from a centre. Please come together outside. We're, we're believing for a beautiful day that we can come together and have fun together with the children and the adults in the church. We're so glad you've joined with us this morning. We pray that you have been blessed by the word that you've heard and encouraged that we're, we're standing with you as we come together and meet in our online community. You are for me, you're not against me. There's a place. 